Surgeon General is declaring gun violence a public health crisis in the U.S. Firearm violence is the leading cause of death among children and adolescents. Now Dr. Vivek Murthy is calling to strengthen gun regulations and penalize people who fail to safely store their weapons. Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas has more. Hi, Pierre. Diane, good morning. The Surgeon General has decided for the first time that the nation's level of gun violence has reached such pervasive levels that it has to be addressed, that the time has come to call it a public health crisis. Much of Vivek Murthy's concern appears rooted in disturbing new trends, including the fact that gun violence has recently emerged as the leading cause of death for children and teens in this country. The Surgeon General provides a series of staggering statistics to make his case. For example, the nation's rate of gun violence for young people is at least five times higher than any other major wealthy country. He believes that gun violence is traumatizing not only the bodies, but the minds of young people, families, and entire communities. His office says that nearly six out of every 10 adults in this country worries on some level that one of their loved ones will become a victim of gun violence. His announcement today emphasizes the need for more funding to provide more access to mental health support for gun violence victims. Diane. Pierre Thomas, thank you. And ABC News medical contributor Dr. Lok Patel is joining me now for more on this. Dr. Patel, what does the Surgeon General's announcement show about how gun violence affects young people in the U.S.? Diane, the biggest thing this report really showed was just flat out staggering numbers. And you know, we go back to 2015, compared to other high income countries, if you're looking at deaths by firearm and children, nine out of 10 of them occurred in the United States. And then fast forward a few years to 2020, gun violence surpassed car accidents as a leading cause of death among young people. This is staggering. 2023, we had over 40,000 deaths by firearms. And we aren't just talking about deaths themselves because we know that firearm injuries are also very widespread. This report also highlights the fact that while mass shootings are this harrowing headline we see all too often, about 600 a year, they only make up about 1% of firearm deaths. When you add in accidents, homicides, legal intervention, suicides, and accidents. So this report really lays out the entire landscape of what firearm violence really means in America and how it affects almost all of us. And you say people sometimes forget that it's not just gun deaths that have an impact, but also gun-related injuries. What are you seeing on that front? Well, gun-related injuries, it really is pervasive. You know, reports actually show that over 50% of Americans are themselves have been impacted by a firearm injury or have had a family member or a friend who have. And we know that firearm injuries can have this devastating toll on victims, communities, families, people afraid to go out to go to certain neighborhoods. The actual injuries themselves can have this huge physical or mental health toll. Obviously, firearm injuries can leave people in chronic pain with disabilities, but also can increase the risk of anxiety, depression, PTSD, this all greatly impacts everyone's way of life, especially for young people. Now, Murthy now says that it's time for the U.S. to take this issue out of the realm of politics and put it in the realm of public health. What does that look like? Why is this being told to us by a doctor? You know, it's commonly being said, this is a public health approach. We need to adopt this from a public health standpoint. What this really comes down to, if you look at core definitions of a public health approach, the first thing we have to do is really lay out the problem. What do the numbers really show? Then, what are the proven risk and protective factors? Next, how do we get widespread adoption? And last, how do we evaluate to make sure that we've actually made change? And a lot of this starts with getting research funding to making sure we can really look at all these factors where the problem is, is and how do we address it? And we've seen this approach work for things such as tobacco. And if we look at motor vehicles, I think looking at the auto industry is an important example because to reduce automobile, automobile deaths, you're looking at vehicle safety restrictions, you're looking at re research, you're looking at road speed limits, all of this, these behavioral steps to make sure that we're saving lives. This is exactly what we need to do when it comes to firearm violence. An all hands on deck, multi-angle approach that is above politics and single solutions because it clearly requires more than that. All right, ABC News medical contributor, Dr. Lok Patel, thank you.